Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to go over the functionality of generating hand histories from Solver Selfplay. Uh, so the way this feature works is we first have to open some files. So I have here uh, generated a script over 12 different flops. And once we load this file, we go to menu three and generate self play hands and export um, when we do that this window shows up and we can specify what exactly do we want to uh, generate so first choice we have to make whether we only want to generate hand histories from currently open tree or or from all similar files in the same directory. Uh, so this feature is working only for flop trees at the moment. And it's mostly intended to be used with uh, solutions that you have scripted over several flops um, with our uh, job or scripting functionality. So here it says it found 12 similar files and we can specify everything we need for the export. So one thing is we have to specify number of hands to generate, and this can be yeah, any number. Um, the name of the job, let's call it video number three, export to exported hands directory, and let's call the output file video number three. And the next thing we have to choose is the format in which we will export hands. So at the moment, there are basically two formats supported. One is a simplified PySolver format, where every generated hand takes exactly one line. Uh, so if you basically intend to analyze these hand histories on your own, writing some, some tool and computing some statistics yourself, it might be just easier to write a parser for that but more likely than not you will want to import it into your preferred hand history database program and for that you will have to imitate a poker site format uh, so the way it works uh, we can select automated automatic game structure if you don't care about the preflop and then it will just generate a random uh, or like a fixed, uh, simple uh, preflop sequence. Uh, but more likely than not, you will want to select uh, some table size, players, and preflop bedding yourself. So the tree we are working on is some three bit pot. I think this particular uh, spot was heads up, but I will show how to and specify it, assuming that it was actually a six max table. Uh, so the way it looks for this hand, we have starting pot is 180 chips and starting stacks were 1000 chips uh, or 910 chips on the flop. So uh, I already have it uh, specified here, but we can start from scratch. So um, we want the pot to be between big blind and small blind and the way it works that the first player posts blind of five chips then we make here a comma separated list of actions the next player posts a blind of 10 and then we have four players folding fold 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 it goes to small blind which bets say 25 chips big blind raises to 90 chips and small blind calls and as a result now we see that the structure is correct so if we would write here for example that it's 910 chips and call then it would say that oh the total bets of the players do not add up to the starting pot of 180 and if we make it 90 again it does work so now we have a proper uh, structure we can create a custom table name custom 
name for the OOP player and custom name for the uh, in position player. And once we are happy with all of that, um, we can, for example, save our poker site format. So everything that is stored uh, in this part of the window, um, we can save it for, for later so that we don't have to uh, specify it every time we do a similar export. So once we're happy with all the data we've provided here, we can click add this task to a job queue. And after a short moment of processing the information, this window opens up. So we can also access this window directly from PyViewer by going Tools, Hand History Generation, Execution Queue. So we, you see I already have prepared some jobs earlier that are similar to this one. And um, once we are here, we can run all or run only one job and it will start um, working. So you can go out. Um, some details about how it works um, is that, for example, this job number two has 1000 hands to be generated. Um, the way it does not work is that it does not start 1000 time trying to generate a random hand. Instead, what it does, it gets the whole bunch of thousand hands it has to create and it splits it into um, here we have 12 files. So it will split this 1000 hands into 12 buckets of size proportional to the actual likelihood of uh, reaching a certain board. And what it means exactly is that there are, so it does not simply divide 1000 into 12 equal buckets. Instead, it takes two factors into consideration. First factor is how likely this kind of a board is. Uh, so the assumption here is that most likely you will be working with some subsets where um, for each isomorphic board, you will have only one representant. So, so what I mean by that is, for example, if you would solve all boards, you would not solve all 22,000 boards. You would solve only 1,755 representative boards. So for each, for example, monotone board, you will have only spades board and not hearts, diamonds, and clubs board. So taking that into consideration, in a huge subset, the um, each rainbow board represents actually 24 different boards. And each monotone bo board represents only four distinct um, boards. And this probability is taken into consideration here. So the boards which are representing more boards in a full subset will be represented proportionally uh, more often. And the second thing uh, that this generation takes into consideration is the likelihood of a board appearing um, by taking into consideration ranges of both players and the blocking effect the ranges have on uh, probability of seeing a certain flop. So in the usual case, the ranges of players who go to the flop are generally high card heavy. So having an ace makes a player more likely to see a flop than say having a deuce. And therefore flops which contain only small cards are less likely to overlap with players ranges and therefore are more likely to appear in a final subset. And, and here I have example for this particular job, video number two, which uh, splits thousand matchups into 12 boards. So first thing we see there's a small bucket with jobs that have higher number and jobs that have lower number. So the jobs that have higher number are basically rainbow boards where with no pair and boards which have uh, smaller numbers 
are boards which either have a pair or a flash draw or both. Uh, and inside of the small bucket and inside of the bucket, like inside of the bucket with higher numbers and inside of the buckets with lower numbers, we see the tendency that the high card board is less likely to appear here than a um, than a board with with small cards. Um, <clears throat> and these numbers should perfectly take these uh, two conditions into account. Uh, plus minus one for each board. Um, so then what happens is, for example, if we take this board, queen of spade, or, or we can take the board which is already open, ace of spade, three of heart, and queen of heart. So this board. So we have 67 hands to be generated from this exit board. So then what we're going to do is uh, the hand history generator tool will take we look at the real frequencies in here, which is 48% versus 52%. And it will assign exactly 52% of those boards, of those matchups into check and 50 and 48% into bet. And, and then it will continue this way, always splitting the number of matchups proportionally to a real frequency of um, each hand, if, of, of each action, to the point where, where the number remains only one. And then at this point, it will generate only one matchup uh, from this point, like following, uh, like randomly selecting uh, actions according to uh, strategies in the tree. And then we can look how it, uh, how it works in action. So we can run, for example, this particular board and we will get every second a short update of what's happening. Uh, so one thing that you can uh, see in here is that uh, viewer will be creating a lot of solver processes. So basically it will create one process for each board and um, kind of process those things in parallel. And, and the process of generating hands is split into two parts where one of them is generating hands. Uh, so like doing the process I just described. And the second is actually exporting those heads, hands into text file, which happens in a separate thread and is um, not synchronized with, with generating hands. So that, that's why here uh, I'm showing basically two numbers. What is the number of currently generated hands and currently exported hands? Um, and normally these two numbers uh, should be exactly like, should be roughly the same, but in a very rare case, especially at the beginning of the hand, uh, when it's generating, for example, a lot of hands for the fold, the generate, the ex export part might lag behind a little bit generated number. Uh, but eventually when we when we get to the point where it's generating one hand for each matchup and then has to resolve the river for each of those matchups, then export becomes actually faster than, than generation. So so usually export will uh, quickly catch up with the with the generation. Uh, so one cool feature in here, which is an improvement over the early versions of this feature, is that whenever any kind of crash happens, for example, well, any kind of crash happens, like the solver could crash, the computer could crash, whatever you might just decide to cancel. You can just restart it later and it will store the progress and, and just continue from that point. Um, so once uh, that is done, so I can, I can cancel before I'm actually processing the, the hole. So now it's generated like 1200 out of 1300 hands. We can open directory with those hands and and here it is hand history with all those hands and you can import that into your uh, preferred tool mm. so i think that's pretty much that about this feature 
Uh, one very technical thing is that each of those jobs is stored um, in this folder, hand history jobs configurations. So each of those jobs is actually a file in here. And each of those files is a um, SQLite database. So I will not go into details how does it look inside, but the point is you can actually see inside how the progress of the hand history generation look like. Um, just to let you know, and once the a certain job is complete, you can you can delete all completed. So here, uh, none of them is completed, but I can just say delete all. And delete all is simply deleting all those files. So that would be it about this feature. Um, I hope it's now clear how to use it. And thank you for watching.